like to uh, have a little bit of um, input from you all. Um, the message is going to be maybe a little different from normal communion message. Um, so what I'd like for, uh, from you is what are some things that you think about in Jesus' life, the suffering, something that he suffered or something that he said <clears throat> after the suffering, after he was on the cross? What's something you think about? What's something he suffered? From from the the place of crown of thorns on his head and beating him and whipping him and and also the words that he said also. I like that. It wasn't just the physical, it was the mental as well. I mean it was the crown of thorns, the whipping and the mockery. And saying, if you're the king of the Jews, then come down. Yeah. Anyone else? I think, man, I think the hardest thing was probably all the sins of the world were resting upon him. Mm-hmm. More than any of the physical. Right. He reached out to the thief on the cross beside him. Okay? Yeah, Jesus said, Into thy hands I commend my spirit. That's probably the last thing that he said. Father, forgive them, for they know what they do. He wasn't focusing on himself, he focused on other people. Yeah, and you know, <clears throat> they took him by force and nailed him on the cross, did they? <laughs> no, nope, he did it all willingly. That's the, that's the amazing thing of it, you know, that <clears throat> they, he willingly gave his life and even all the suffering that he endured, he wasn't focusing on all that, but he was looking on all the people that needed salvation, and he was focused on that. <clears throat> even the very ones that nailed him to the cross. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. <clears throat> He even thought of his earthly mother when he was on the cross. And like I said, he did it willingly. Um, Sacrifice. I have a few things that I'd like to look at at sacrifice and say a, a definition or, or a scripture that points out the, or brings out the definition of sacrifice. First Chronicles 21 verse 24 <clears throat> says, King David said unto Ornay, but I will verily buy it for full price. I will not take that which is thine for the Lord, nor burn offering without cost. Here, <clears throat> King David wanted to make uh, a burnt offering and he wanted to buy this piece of land, and this this man wanted to just give it to him. Is that a sacrifice? If if he would have took that land to build the uh, altar to make the sacrifice, wouldn't have been a sacrifice, would it? I mean, he didn't cost. He wanted to get. If I if I have it correct, the uh, he wanted to give him the land and the sacrifice and the off the 
the uh, the animal for the burned offering. And it wouldn't have been a sacrifice because it would have been a gift. He would have offered the gift that was given to him he would, if he wouldn't have paid for it. But he refused the gift because he said, <clears throat> a man generously offered, David refused saying, I will not offer a burnt offering that has cost me nothing. <clears throat> the word sacrifice implies giving something that costs the giver in terms of self, time, or money. To give sacrificially requires more than a token effort or gift. God wants us to give voluntarily, but he, want, but he wants it to mean something. Giving to God what costs you nothing does not demonstrate commitment. <clears throat> so as we, as we think of, of Christ dying on the cross and shedding his blood, and it was, it was a sacrifice. He did it. You know, it cost him his life, but it wasn't because they took him and, bound, and nailed him on that cross. Um, I mean, yeah, that was, but it was because he willingly did it. That's, you know, it was a, it was a, it was a, a choice that he made. Um, you know, when, when they came out to uh, take him, um, in the garden, Jesus said, you know, I was with you all these times and, you know, you never, they never took me. And, <clears throat> and here they brought the, all these, this great army to take him and, and he willingly went with them. If, if it wouldn't have been <coughs> the time, they couldn't have taken him. <clears throat> In Psalm 50, <clears throat> verse 14, it says, Offer unto God sacrifice, thanksgiving, and pay thy vows unto the Most High, and call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. <clears throat> in, in, the old, in the Old Testament, <clears throat> um, the Old Covenant, person could offer an animal to God as a substitute for himself, symbolizing the person's faith in the merciful, forgiving God. <clears throat> and, you know, <clears throat> um, the people were offering sacrifices as part of their worship ritual and forgetting the significance. <clears throat> we can fall into the same into that same uh, pattern when we when we uh, participate in religious uh, activities or or whatever I mean like today in communion you know if we don't realize or take time to actually consider the um, what we are, what we are doing is to remind us of of the the love that Jesus had, the price He paid for us, and <clears throat> that um, we realize that it's not just being a member in church, but it's it's to in willing obedience follow God's commands <clears throat> out of a heartfelt love um, that's what you know that we put our all into it that we realize it's more than just uh, following the form <clears throat> in 
in Matthew um, 8, this uh, scribe came to Jesus and he said, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has not where to lay his head. <clears throat> Do we realize do we realize the uh, the cost of of following Jesus? It's not just um, it's not just something that we should take lightly, but yet um, as we make a choice in our life that we can that we realize it's not for just for today, but it's it's a choice that we make for our life, um, and that we are determined to follow through regardless what it costs us, <clears throat> regardless of what we face in life. You know, <clears throat> Jesus knew when, when, he, when he left heaven and, and came down and was born in, the world, in, in this world, um, he knew that he would grow up and that the end of his life here would be a terrible death and suffering and um, <clears throat> and yet he was willing to do that. When we uh, make made the choice to commit our life to Jesus, we have no idea what we will face. <clears throat> if we if we knew the end, if we look back through things that we've gone through. Um, I hope that we can say it's you know it's been a joy. Things that maybe if we if we face some uh, mockery or you know whatever it might have been that we that we uh, we can do it with joy. Think of how Jesus did it. He prayed for those that mocked him. For those that nailed him on the cross, <clears throat> his, his heart wasn't a heart of trying, of wanting to get even with them, of wanting a revenge, but his heart was a heart that they, they could see the error of their ways and that they would turn from that before it's forever too late. <clears throat> In Matthew 19, verse 21, Jesus said, <clears throat> If thou wilt be perfect, go sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come and follow me. <clears throat> I don't think that God, you know, God doesn't require that we go and sell everything that we have, and that we just take, you know, that we just... But it's that we have that mentality in our heart that we have, that we put everything at his disposal. <clears throat> that we realize that what we have is, is God's and um, that we're willing to uh, give it to him if he asks it of us. <clears throat> In Romans 12, verse 1, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. <clears throat> what is... Present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. You know, in the Old Testament, they killed the animals. They put them on the altar. They burnt them. And they, you know, it was, it was to God, <clears throat> a, uh, a sacrifice to God. And sometimes in the Old Testament, there were sacrifices made that were not pleasing to God. <clears throat> One in Samuel... Um, 15, 22, and Samuel said, 
<clears throat> this is after the sacrifice. Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burned offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. <clears throat> God wants us to offer, like it says there in Romans, you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. To offer ourselves daily, laying aside our own desires, laying, to follow him, putting all our energy and our resources at his disposal, <clears throat> and trusting him to guide us. Being, you could say being willing to do what he calls us um, realizing the price that he paid for us, the willingness that he had, that Jesus had to come and give his life and die on the cross, <clears throat> shed his blood. Allowing him to Say to transform us, to change us, to renew our minds, um, <clears throat> being obedient to Him. <clears throat> if we think of sacrifice, we can go to a lot of different, um, a lot of different areas, different directions, um, and but I think the main point is that we remember that a sacrifice has to cost something. It, it's never, it's not free. If it's free, it's a gift. Uh, I guess I didn't really spend a lot of time to think through that, but a sacrifice costs something, and just like Jesus, it, he did more than just, you know, his sacrifice, how can I say, it cost him everything, and not just, not just did it cost him his life, you know, everything, his life, but he went through the suffering, he endured that patiently and willingly for us um, because of the love that he had for us. <clears throat> you know, if we think about it, you know, the, the cruel mockings and... Um, the the beating and the uh, carrying the cross you know if if they would have just <clears throat> if they would have just crucified him he wouldn't it wouldn't have he wouldn't have suffered near as much but he was willing to to suffer. <clears throat> you know, if we think of of communion or you could say the Lord's Supper or <clears throat> if we think of the Lord's Supper, it's you know, it's what he what he instituted <clears throat> as he before he died, before he suffered, he uh, with his disciples <clears throat> they gathered together and they break broke the bread and and the, drank from the cup and Jesus gave them instruction. <clears throat> and in Matthew 26, um, verse 20, Verse 26, Matthew 26, verse 26. As they were eating, Jesus took the bread. He blessed it. He broke it. He gave it to the disciples and say, said, Take, eat. This is my body. And so here we can clearly see that it wasn't, it wasn't his actual body, but it was a resemblance of his. Of, and that's what Jesus was teaching them. And then he took the cup and he gave thanks and, and he told them to drink of it. And and then he gave, uh, he said, for this is my blood, the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. And <clears throat> it 
as you know, if we think of the Lord's Supper, it's it's uh, what He taught the disciples there, um, and that's that's you know, I think on further down He says um, this do this do in remembrance of me. <clears throat> Or that's in or that's in First Corinthians eleven. For as often as ye as ye eat the bread and drink the cup, you show the Lord's death until he come. And so there it's it's a re it's telling us that you know it wasn't just something that Jesus taught his disciples, but he he wants the church to to do it, to to remind us of his love, of his uh, pain that he went through um, for us. <clears throat> if we if we just go through communion as a ritual, that's something that you know, and, and think you know, that's something that's been done for years, and and you know, we we just go through it, and we don't really think of the cost and the reason. Um, then um, it's we've lost we've lost a lot <clears throat> you know if we think um, and we can't just go through it and you know remember what it costs but we need to like we heard two weeks ago we need to take time to prepare for it um, remember what uh, Titus preached two weeks ago of if we don't if we don't take time um, to prepare for it you know either we're going to be blessed by it or it's going to be uh, or it'll condemn us <clears throat> if we're not prepared if we're not worthy um, I think was it Paul that, yeah, Paul that he, um, when he was teaching about it, he said that um, he was speak of those that take it and they were gluttons and, and then there was others that um, were left out. <clears throat> um, I think maybe in the... Uh, In some of those churches, they would have had a, a, a meal instead of, you know, just emblems like we, we have. And so there it was, uh, I'd say maybe it was misused. But, you know, we can look at that and think that, you know, they, it was misused. But in the same, we want to, we can misuse it by not... Um, not really considering what it's about, knowing that it's because of of what God has done for us. <clears throat> um, and you know what? Uh, we discussed it in our uh, Sunday school discussion a little bit of you know it, it need. We need to be more than just members of in the church. We need to uh, we need to have that fire burning in our life. There was uh, different different men that said said prophetic things before they died <clears throat> um, I think Joshua and Moses both said be courageous take courage Joshua also said choose for yourself or choose today uh, whom you will serve as for me and my house so we will serve the Lord and 
you know, that's, that's not something that we choose one time, but we choose daily who we're going to serve. Um, Peter, Peter said, um, yeah, I think it meet as long as I'm in this tabernacle to stir you up by putting you in remembrance, knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus has showed me his uh, preaching and teaching. And I think that's an important thing for us as we go through our life, that our, that our lights are shining, that we, that we are an example to those that we come in contact with. <clears throat> Paul wrote, <clears throat> For I am now ready to be offered in the time of my departures at hand. I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith henceforth. There is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not only, not me only, but all them that love his appearing. What, what is our, what is our testimony today? If, am I? Can we say that? <clears throat> I'm ready to be offered. Or I have fought a good fight. I've, I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous Judge, shall give to me at that day. Have I? done everything that is that I have that I'm able to do and am ready to do whatever more God has for me or have I left some things undone You know, there's, <clears throat> all of us have, have that uh, need, or we were all born with that sinful nature in sin. There was probably <clears throat> only three people on earth that, um, didn't begin life with that evil nature, um, and I didn't. I never really thought about it till I, I read it. Um, Jesus, I don't think had that evil nature, and when God created Adam and Eve, I don't think they had it, but they fell. Um, <clears throat> We can, we were all, we're all born with that evil sin nature in our life. We can, we can think, um, or yeah, we can try to live a good life and think that we've led a, a per, lived a pretty good life, but we still have that sin nature within us. And, and uh, Jesus, you know, without, without accept, making a choice to accept Jesus, then we don't have them in our life. I mean, it's it's we're born without without it. <clears throat> um, although there is a there is a time of of innocence there. <clears throat> and you know, just <clears throat> thinking of of those those words that Jesus um, said on the cross. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He was right in the, right in, the, could say, probably in the middle of his, I don't know if it was, which was the greatest pain, you know, the whipping that he endured or the, or the uh, nailing to the cross, but I, I you know, those are, those are two pains that I could say physical pains. I would 
tend to think that the uh, the pain of of taking the sins upon him and of the cruel mockings hurt just as just as much. <clears throat> the pain of Peter denying him three times. You know that was that was before Jesus was crucified. What you know <clears throat> Peter denied him three times and you could say he almost yeah, he did it without even thinking what he was saying. And you know I just thought about that. How how is it with me as I go through life? How many times do I th- do things without thinking of of what I'm doing, or say things without taking time to think about what I'm about to say? <coughs> when I go through life, and if I when I face struggles and trials. How long does it take me to realize that I'm not able to do it, that I commit, just commit it to to God and ask him for help? I've already been in, oh, in the past several years, been challenged by other people and just the simple things of life could say maybe you know something mechanical on a piece of equipment is you know maybe doesn't work right um, asking God for help Th- or I guess um, you know we, I, I take it for granted way too often that God cares about those little things in life. And, and I've experienced it that um, going through things and being very frustrated that it just wasn't working the way it should and trying everything I knew and it still wouldn't work and finally to my shame, finally asking God, and it started working. And, and you know, then the potential is to forget about it and think, now it's working, instead of thanking God for it, that it's working. Um, you know, it's, the God we serve doesn't care just about big things, but he cares about the little things also, and um, he desires our worship. He deserves our worship. How, 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 how good a job do I do in giving him that worship and that praise that belongs to him? <clears throat> you know, if we think of the suffering that Jesus went through as they, you know, as they whipped him, as they spit in his face, as they forced him to carry the cross as they nailed him to the cross. How did he react? It was all in love. Never, never showed any anger. Even at the height of his suffering, his, say his uh, response was love. His prayer to God was for forgiveness for those. You know, and <clears throat> when Jesus was crucified, he didn't he didn't just uh, think now is, now my work's done, but. He uh, he 
you know, he, he spoke to that thief there on the cross and, and he gave him hope. <clears throat> he told him, you know, that thief just asked him, um, well, first, the, the one thief, he says, he, he says, if thou be the Christ, he challenged him, if you're God, if you're Christ, he said, come down and, and help us. And the other, the other one, he rebuked him and, and he just he just looked, he just said, Jesus, he just asked Jesus, remember me. And Je and could say, there was there could have been more conversation there. <clears throat> um but well, yeah, the, he he rebuked the other, and and he said, you know, we're we're just getting what we deserve. And then he he, he told Jesus, remember we, remember me when you come into paradise. And Jesus told him, today you you will be with me in paradise. <clears throat> You know, there was <clears throat> many people, I believe, were there watching when Jesus was on the cross and his mother was there. And I'm sure, you know, if we know a mother's heart, she was probably just torn. <clears throat> and Jesus... Jesus wanted to provide care for her and 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 he he told John <clears throat> or he first he, he said woman behold thy son and then he turned to John and he said behold thy mother um, Jesus had compassion when he was on the cross when he was suffering when he was say about to die <clears throat> And yet, I think Jesus was about to face the greatest thing that he knew he had to face, and that was God leaving him, that he could die. And when he said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And I believe... You know, it wasn't, <clears throat> it wasn't that, uh, you know, it's the same, same God we still serve today. God doesn't willingly, doesn't just desire to turn his back and walk away. But, <clears throat> you know, if, if we don't have God in our life, it's because we walked away. But here, God, um, God left. Jesus sighed so, so he could die. <clears throat> Reminded of um, <clears throat> Adam and Eve in the garden, God came to the garden and he said, he said, Adam, where are you? It wasn't because God, God didn't know where he was at, but I believe it was because Adam and Eve tried to hide from God and they were trying to get away and, and uh, God wanted them to think about where they truly were. And <clears throat> we need to be reminded of that sometimes. Where, where, where am I? What am I doing? Am I, <clears throat> am I going against things that, that I know, uh, that I've been taught? <clears throat> In 
1 Peter 2, verse 24, it says, He himself bore our sins in his body upon the cross so that, so that, that's not correct. I think that's quite, um, something doesn't look right. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we, being dead to sin, should live and to righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. <clears throat> Jesus took that took those stripes for us. <clears throat> Another thing that Jesus said when he was on the, cr on the cross, and this is probably yeah, I think this is the only thing that would reflect anything that um, Jesus showed any, uh, he said, I thirst. I don't think that it showed any weakness, but maybe it's the only thing that, that we see that Jesus asked for himself. And what a minor thing. And it just makes me think of the uh, verse that it says, uh, you know, whatever. If we even give a cup of water, it's like doing it to God. Um, and we know that when he asked, when he said, I thirst, that they, they, uh, they gave him, um, brought that hiss out with wine and gall, maybe. And... For him and and uh, <clears throat> that's not that's not what he was looking for. You know, something to take. He wasn't looking for something to take the pain away, and that's what that was designed for. But he was willing to bear that pain for us. <clears throat> In uh, John four. Um, Verse 13 is when uh, you know, Jesus, the Samaritan woman at the well, <clears throat> you know, he said, Everyone who drinks this water shall be thirsty again, but whoso shall drink the water that I shall give him shall never be thirsty. The water that I shall give him shall, become, shall come in him a spring of water gushing up into eternal life. Or paraphrase a little bit. But basically, if, um, if we look for things in this world for comfort, it's never going to satisfy, but if we have, if we look to God, to his word, it will, it will be something that's like a fountain continually refreshing us, and uh, it's, it'll never, never run dry. <clears throat> After they offered that um, sponge or that hyssop to him, <clears throat> Jesus said, it is finished. Um, he knew that he had come, he had, he had, uh, done the work that God had for him. He had completed it. <clears throat> he had considered um, everything. In, in Luke 14, the, uh, the story of, of uh, well, it, um, it says, which of you take... Uh, Wanting to build a tower doesn't first take 
thought of the cost that you wouldn't be so you're able to finish it. Um, I'd say that's kind of what, if we think of our life, you know, as we as we make choices. <clears throat> Uh, I think it ends up there that this man began to build and wasn't able to finish. Our, as we go through our life, the things we do, um, if we if we don't stick to that commitment, the way you know the commitment we've made. Um, we can be a stumbling block to people around us. So I think it's very important, not just, you know, not just for our own life, you know, that we are faithful to that commitment, but also that we don't become a stumbling block to others. <clears throat> Jesus wasn't, Jesus didn't, he wasn't a quitter, he didn't go part of the way. He went all the way. He completed what he came to do. His, his mission was a, a total success. He left no part undone. <clears throat> and so why did he come? It was, I think it, we can we can summarize that up in uh, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but ever have everlasting life. That, that was the mission that why Jesus came was that um, no one has to be lost, that it's available to everyone. But there's conditions with it. It says, whosoever believeth in him. <clears throat> the, uh, the darkest day of, man, of mankind became the brightest day for mankind. You know, as when Jesus died there on the cross, um, a lot of people, you know, they realized that all of a sudden they realized that this was a just man that just died and now, you know, they, they looked at it and we don't have him here anymore with us. And, but that was the perfect plan. That was the plan that God had. and That's now the brightest day because Jesus was willing to sacrifice his life, shed his blood. There's hope for us that we can that we can be redeemed. <clears throat> and Jesus Jesus said those words, it is finished. Um, say it there's a it carries a sense of accomplishment. You know, we uh we can build something, we can whatever. Uh, you know, and it's not accomplished until it is finished. And Jesus did that. He, you know, he, he finished the work on earth that God sent him to do. And, and he's on the cross, he said, it is finished. And then he, um, he cried out with a loud voice, Father, to thy hands I commend my spirit. He gave his, he knew, you know, that he was separated from his heavenly father and he, he gave his, he commended his spirit back to him. <clears throat> like I alluded to, they didn't take Jesus' life, he gave it. They, you know, sometimes I believe we get, we read some Bible story books and we see some pictures and we get some things um, 
we get some things mixed together of what the Bible says and and what the Bible storybook says. And um, I don't I don't think that it's it's misleading the pictures that we get from from the Bible story books that and maybe it is you know did they did they take a hold of Jesus and lay him on the cross or did he just lay down on the cross and spread out his arms it wouldn't be hard to you know that's what that was Jesus mission to come to give his life and so it would uh, I didn't I didn't take time to uh, read it so I, I can't tell you right now is it does it say in the Bibles that he laid on the cross and stretched out his arms or is it from a Bible story book um, but I guess the point that I'd like for us to get is that he laid down his life willingly he suffered those stripes willingly he allowed he allowed those things to happen. He could have, if he wouldn't have been willing to go through with it, um, he could have avoided some of those things. But that was the plan that God had, and he was willing to do it. Although we know that it was, it was a hard thing for him because when he prayed in the garden, the he sweated mightily and he continued to ask God for strength and so we know that it wasn't just a simple thing for him to do but it was willing in closing <clears throat> two verses that uh, the one I already, already read, but I'm going to read it again. <clears throat> but the first one that before that um, are the first words that Jesus said, are the first recorded words that Jesus said. Uh, let's paraphrase a little bit. Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? That's the first recorded words, I believe, that Jesus spake. And that's what his, what, after he said that, I mean, that's what, you know, uh, his life was about, was to be about his father's business. And then the other verse, in closing, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It's a, that was, it's a, that his mission was fulfilled. That's why he came, um, was to provide everlasting life, eternal life. <clears throat> it is truly, truly a blessing to uh, be reminded of the great love that God had for us and his willingness to come and die on the cross to give his life for us that we um, they didn't they didn't take his life he willingly gave it how how willing are we today in our life um, are we willing willingly doing the things we do or are we only doing them because we know it's required from us if we expect to get to heaven I think there's a big difference there <clears throat> okay I think uh, I think we'll just continue move on into uh, <clears throat> for communion um, I am I correct I think everyone was here for council meeting
Is there anybody here that, anybody that wasn't here? Okay, I thought everybody was. Um, okay, for the, uh, for the order of communion, um, like we usually do, the file through and then after filing through, we'll all stay standing until everybody has been served and we'll partake together. Um, <clears throat> and Titus will help serve. Um, and then, uh, yeah, after everybody's been served, then I'll serve to the ministers last. So, um, Freeman and Titus, if you move up front here if you at this time um, and give me a piece of bread also <clears throat> in now uh, first Corinthians <clears throat> 11, verse 23, it says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. <clears throat> for as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you show the Lord's death until he come. Therefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. Let a man examine himself, and so let him eat that bread and drink that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. The bread represents the Lord, the body of Jesus. <clears throat> if we if we think of, like I said, the Jesus was born without that sinful nature, although he was tempted in all points like as we, um, yet he, he, never, he never sinned. <clears throat> and you know, if we think of that, just, just a thought that came to me now is, you know, even though Jesus was perfect without sin, he he didn't um, excuse himself from being baptized, from washing feet, and things. You know those those ordinances. He did them, even though he was perfect. Not that those things make make us perfect, but um, if we you know, it's a, uh, Jesus didn't put, what I'm saying, I guess, is Jesus didn't put himself above us in any, any way. He lived his life just like we uh, get showed, led by example. <clears throat> we know that uh, bread has flour in it from kernels of grain. It's all ground and blended together. <clears throat> Luke 22, he, t he took the bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, he gave to them saying, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. <clears throat> the bread which we break is it not the communion of the body of Christ? And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. <clears throat> this time, let's all rise for a word of prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that we can be gathered together in this way to be reminded to commemorate what you've done for us, that you suffered, you took a beating, 
You had the crown of thorns placed on your head in mockery. You died on the cross. You shed your blood. You did it willingly. We thank you, Lord, for that. And help us as we go through this day that we remember the sacrifice that you made, that you did for us willingly. And as we go through our life, that we can be a shining light witness for you <clears throat> that it can be a willing part of our life and not uh, help us that we never do it because of um, a ritual but that we realize the cost of your life uh, the gift that you gave to us and we thank you for that gift and just be with us today as we partake of these emblems. Can it draw us closer to you and to each other? In Jesus' name we pray. <clears throat>